Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online series 9 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're trying out a really interesting team that I saw on the VGC subreddit first, built by a player called John Walrus, so thank you very much to them for posting the team and for building it. Uh, they also posted a team report about this, so I've linked that in the description below on Reddit, uh, and it has really good insight in how you can really use the team and the specific EV spreads, and there's a rental and a pace courtesy of them as well, so once again, huge shoutouts to them. Uh, and of course, I wanted to feature this team because, I mean, it has Azura and Runarigus, right? These are two Pokemon that you basically never see in VGC. Uh, the main idea behind the team is to set up Trick Room. Zero comes out, uses that Brutal Swing, acti activates the Weakness Policy and Wandering Spirit, uh, and then you effectively have a Runarigus that can just pick up KOs onto everything with Earthquake and Rock Slide. Uh, one thing that you can also do is KO your own Azuril after activating the Weakness Policy and Wandering Spirit, uh, and then basically go down early, but then have multiple turns of Trick Room to work with, and then you have Runarigus and Torkoal, uh, both with really powerful spread damage. Now, note that if you end up Dynamaxing Runarigus immediately, it only activates the Weakness Policy and not Wandering Spirit, unfortunately, so that is something to consider. Uh, that being said, it can still be really powerful, right? Runarigus, just with the Policy Boost, is still decently powerful. So, you've got the main Trick Room mode, which is Togekiss, Runarigus, Lee, Torkoal, Zero in the back, or you have uh, Lilligant and Torkoal as well. We actually just used Lilligant a while back with that Riolu team, so it's not like the first time we've seen this Pokemon, but uh, obviously Lilligant plus Torkoal is a pretty fun combination. You can even go like Togekiss, Drake, Result, Lilligant, Torkoal, or Lilligant. Lilligant, Torkoal, uh, Togekiss, Dracozold in the back, for example. Uh, the main max options are obviously going to be Dracozold and Runarigus, but Torkoal can max as well with this team. And uh, yeah, Azuril's moveset, really interesting. Outside of the Brutal Swing, you also get Soak, Helping Hand, and Charm. So uh, this is, I think, a really good example of how to take a Pokemon that's not very common uh, and actually make it work, right? You find the niche that it has, you find the unique moves that it has, uh, and you can really catch opponents off guard with it. So um, I think it's a really, really cool way to, yeah, just make Azuril work. I've literally never seen it in competitive play before and i'm sure most of our opponents as we play on the ladder haven't seen it either so should be a really fun one uh so once again huge thank you to john for the team and thank you to you all as always for watching if you enjoyed please share your support by leaving a like i'd really appreciate it and question of the day i want to know what your favorite non-fully evolved pokemon is down in the comment section below i my answer has always been pitbull up uh but i would love if Piplop got like a couple more viable moves, I mean, it's not even in the game right now, but <laughs> once it is, it'd be cool if it got a little bit more like uh, of a moveset so you could actually maybe use the EVO Lite version. And maybe it already has, to be honest. I've never really explored it or looked at it at all, but yeah, uh, Azuro here certainly looks quite nice. So either way, let's get into the episode. All right, as we look for our first opponent of the day, I can't help but quote this uh, from the team report by the original creator, John. <laughs> Describing Azuril, it's only the most sophisticated gaming experience created by humans, and it's spherical. Uh, what more do you really need to know? Wow, okay, they actually have a hard trick room team. Well, not a hard trick room team, they have Venusaur, I guess, so that alone makes things a little bit trickier. Um, no pun intended. Runarigus, 31... Torkoal's 22, but I don't... I think Runarigus is pretty solid here. It, it's just weird, because it's like, do I even need to set up Trick Room? They don't have any ground resistor immunes. I don't know. I'm thinking we just go Togekiss Runarigus, but I'm nervous about NDD plus Hatterene lead. Um... Uh, the dynamic of this is very interesting, but I, I don't really love Dracozol or Lilligan here, so I think I'm just going to go with the classic four of this team and see how it plays out. <laughs> the, the thing is that Runarigus, like, will just one-shot everything with Earthquake here if we actually get it set up. So, the question is how easily we can get it set up. Um, Charm and Azuro is actually pretty valuable into stack attack specifically. I think my opponent's strongest combo here is going to be Hat NDD because we don't have any resists to psychic if i wanted to counter hat ndd what could i even lead porkle lilligan i guess would be interesting um it's definitely not dracozole because it's just going to get hit by a max starfall yeah i i think hat ndd is probably the toughest lead to go up against here ideally we bait them into setting up trick room honestly um and then go from there. Because if Trick Room goes up and I bring in a zero and I get the Brutal Swing off, like, it's great. Um, I'm just double-checking the base speed of Runarigus. I think... Is it the same as... Is it the same as Hatterene? Okay, they do correctly go with Indy, uh, Indy D Hatterene. Or it'd be one point faster. We are 30, and uh, Hat's 29, right? I'm just double-checking. Because if that's the case, we'll just have speed right now. It is 29, yeah. 
Huh. Like, I could just go Helping Hand. Helping Hand EQ turn one's honestly interesting. Uh, it's a little bit risky, but if you're my opponent, I don't know, I would probably go Follow Me, Max Psychic into Togekiss. Um, okay, I'm going to play, uh, I guess I get Expanding Force as well. Okay, I'm kind of down to just Helping Hand Earthquake turn one. We'll see how this plays out. I don't know if this is like necessarily the smartest play, but we'll see if they max. Okay, they do go for the max. Um, you should still follow me here. If I went follow me with Togekiss, we would have survived with Sash. So yeah, I guess I should have just gone for follow me instead, I think. Um, we'll see if they target Runerigas here, but I suspect they will. Okay. Get the max off. Not following me. Well, actually, I guess you maybe don't go for follow me just because you, you think I'm never going to go for... Oh, okay, yeah, they go for helping hand. Up. Uh, um, it's really good damage on an NED, not so much onto Hatterene. They do go for the Smite here onto Runarigus, okay. So they'll get Confusion up now, which is obviously scary. Um, I can obviously go into Torkoal. And they can just Expanding Force though, right? Zero's really useless now. So there's really not much value there. Um, follow me. I mean, they're just going to expanding force max psychic here, right? Into Torkoal. So I'm thinking just dazzling gleam. I like dazzling and protect here. Mm. No, I like dazzle and actually switching Torkoal out into Zuril. Yeah. And then try to maybe play towards a Torkoal Sweep in the end. I think I, yeah, turn one I should have gone follow me EQ. Um, that would have been a lot better because we would have survived with Sash as well. Okay, we don't hit ourselves in Confusion, so that's good. It is enough to knock out NDD, which is good. And Azuril's out on the field now. And they're going to go for Mindstorm. Yep, into Azuril. Enough <laughs> for a KO despite EVL Light. Poor guy. <laughs> he did his best. Okay, now we bring Torkoal back out. And I can max guard Torkoal, but maybe they target Togekiss here instead. I haven't really revealed that much about Togekiss yet, though. So, this definitely did not go to plan, unfortunately. Um, but my opponent correctly identified the best combo and made a nice play turn one, too. I don't really have great counterplay to that. Especially because we don't have a ghost type attack on the uh, Runerigas. If we did, we could gamble and uh, just go for like Helping Hand Max Phantasm. Uh, okay, they have Venusaur out. Venusaur, Venusaur, Venusaur. Um, uh, I think I have to follow me here. Well, I guess I could just follow me Eruption, right? Yeah, follow me Eruption is very powerful here. Because you shouldn't have spread type damage. And then Torkoal can just max on whatever my opponent's last Pokemon is. So, yeah, I think this works. But... Yeah, I'm just sad because we didn't get the Runerigus. Oh, wait, I'm still confused. We need a attack through confusion, but we do manage to. Okay. Well, this would certainly be an interesting victory if we got it, just because, you know, things didn't play accordingly at all. And they go for Sleep Powder. Yep, that's fine. Question now is what item you have on the Venusaur. Is it Focus Sash? Because if not, Eruption might just be a double KO here. They go for Smite too, which is a good play. Yeah, you cover for Follow Me, go for the confusion here on Tutorial. So... Unfortunately, that is the tough thing around playing around G-Max Hatterene. If you can't KO it, you have to just deal with the confusion rolls. But somehow, we haven't hit ourselves in confusion once, which is really sweet, and that's a double KO. <laughs> I think Toriko can just max on whatever my opponent's last Pokemon is, honestly. So, I think, yeah, we were very lucky to not hit ourselves in confusion on either Pokemon there. Because if either of them hit, well, yeah, Sleep Hunter was probably going into the Toriko slot, you would think, right? And the last one's Stack Attacko. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we this is still far from over because we could hit ourselves in confusion, but Torkoal can obviously just max. 
I'm wondering if I want to flare or Quake here. Obviously, Quake is 4x super effective. Yeah, if they're Shookaberry, whatever. And if they're weakness policy, we just one-shot them. I'm just going to max this as kind of a defensive maneuver here. But yeah, very lucky for us in this game that we didn't get hit by Confusion once. So we'll take it. Okay, hopefully I can get the Runarigas stuff set up in the next game. I mean, we brought Runarigas and Azuro out here. It just was kind of an awkward matchup. So it is what it is. Um, okay, Torkoal's going to max. Yeah, Rock Slide shouldn't even be a 2. Well, I guess they'll get a Beast Boost here, but we'll see. Okay, Sleep. They are faster. Ooh, that's actually scary. Them being faster means um, I need to hit one of this turn or next turn. Okay, but we snap out of Confusion. It looks like they're Shookaberry, but another Rock Slide won't KO. I, I think Max Flare honestly would have just one-shot, so... Uh, Flare's probably better in this position, actually. Yeah, it's not enough for a KO. But now we just win, right? There's no way my opponent gets out of this one. Um, I guess your best chance is to double protect. We got really lucky this game with uh, with no like confusion rolls, though. So we'll take it. Okay, and... Yeah, just Quake and a stack attack. Now, even if they protect, we managed to pick up the KO. So they need a crit here, but not enough. It looks like we might have survived another one any, uh, anyway, um, but I think Max Flare... You know what, I'm going to do that calc right now. I'm pretty sure Max Flare does one-shot, though, with Sun Up, because it's base 150. But I do want to confirm that, because I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Torkoal, Stack Attack, uh, Charcoal, Eruption, Max with the Sun being up. Yeah, that's enough for a one-hit KO. So it's always Max Flare over Max Quake there. That would have given us even better odds of winning. So, I don't feel great about that win, just because, like, we had to uh, dodge a bunch of confusions, and, like, you know, when multiple Pokemon are confused for multiple turns, the odds of you, you know, attacking through all the confusions are obviously not amazing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll take it for sure, but uh, didn't feel like the cleanest of wins. I think turn one, follow me, would have just been a better play, um, but in the end, Torkoal was absolutely incredible, and that's one of the reasons why it's such a strong Pokemon right now, so... Didn't get the Runerigus as rule in this one, but, uh, well, we brought him out. We just didn't get the sweep I was intending for, but that was a really fun one either way. So let's look for our next one. All right, getting into things here. I think I'm just going to go Togekiss, Runerigus, Torkoal, Azuro here. I just really want a Runerigus sleep. That's all I ask for, or sweep. Um, Zolt is actually pretty solid here, but I'm committed to making Azuro plus Runerigus work. So that's what we're going to go for here. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I'm hoping we can just go for Follow Me Trick Room. They have the Glastrier. Um, should I be worried about Glastrier, actually? I mean, it's pretty scary, right? Like, I the, the main thing here is that it can go for... Like, it, it's probably my opponent's best Trick Room answer, just because it's slow, right, relative to the rest of their team. The, the rest of their team is pretty weak against Trick Room. Um, the main thing I'm worried about is just the speed tie between Runerigus and the um, Glastrier. So if they go with Glastrier, what I can do is, like, Charm Protect Runerigus, then... Not even then. Hmm. Maybe I just don't go for... Maybe I just have to max defensively then? I don't know. Torkoal also works as a switch in into Runerigus. So, like, we could stall out our opponent's max. But one thing about this team is you really do have to account for when, like, things don't go accordingly to plan, right? Um, but the Charm on Azuro here is actually really valuable. We also have Soak, which is kind of cool. And that gets rid of the same type of attack bonus. That's going to be Feeny and Moltres. All right, I mean, that's fine with me. I, I guess the only problem here... Actually, there are multiple problems. They have Brutal Swing. Or, sorry, they, they have... um They're going to have dual spread attacks here but i think what we can do is play defensively to start this game so here's what i'm going to do i am going to go for yawn yawn is really good for us here and protect turn one then turn two i can switch runerigus out into azuro dazzling gleam yeah they might go like nasty plot calm mine but it's just fiery rat okay uh flincher would be very bad so i'm hoping to avoid that but spread type damage is really one of the best ways you could counter this, so good job on my opponent to identify that. And they do just go for Fire Wrath Muddy Water, which is what I want to see. <sighs> just a little bit scary, because there's a lot that could go wrong here. Um, okay, Togekiss, no accuracy drop, and we get Yawn off. Okay, perfect. Yeah, now I'm going to switch Runerigus out. I'm going to go for Dazzling Gleam. 
and go out into a zero. <laughs> the only question is like, where do I pivot from there? I'm leaning here also because like Moltres is in a weird spot. Like even if it's weakness policy, yeah, they're gonna switch out. Okay. And that's gonna be Glastrier. That's fine. Is that fine? I mean, you're just gonna Hailstorm next turn. I can't change the terrain, but I can obviously Charm with a zero. I'm gonna call mine, which isn't great. The main thing here is getting the policy active, like the policy combo stuff off. Um. Ooh, we crit. That's really nice. Okay, that's a big crit, honestly. Um. Now Hailstorm into Togekiss feels likely. So I want to switch that out into Torkoal. Hopefully they max the Glastrier. Not expecting anything from Azura and we get the charm off. I just couldn't safely like set up Trick Room here, right? Like the, the whole point of Togekiss, Runaregus is to bait your opponent into KOing Togekiss, so then Runaregus gets Trick Room up freely, but like we haven't been able to really do that today. Uh or in this game specifically, unfortunately. So, yeah. Still okay, all right. Like it, it. This is the thing. You can't just always stick to one game plan because that's not how. Like it's it's you know it'd be great if that is what happens in Pokemon, but the reality is like like very rarely are you going to be able to just do the same thing over and over and over again because there's so many different teams and combinations of Pokemon that you need to account for. And Pokemon's all about adaptation and kind of like learning on the spot uh, in a lot of scenarios, right? Like yes, if you can get the combo off, you'll probably win, but it's easier said than done. Um. And with my opponent leading two Pokemon that uh, pressured super effective damage on the Arena Regis, there's really no answer, right? Okay, so they do max Glastrier, which is good, because I will get a Charm off onto it. I'm thinking we probably just max the, um, the Arena Regis, honestly. Because, like, the thing is, um, the thing is, I'm gonna get a Charm off onto Glastrier. And they go for Steel Spike. Alright, that works for me. Perfect. Yeah, Torkoal's a really good defensive switch and, and synergizes really well with uh, Togekiss because you yeah, Steel-type attacks and Ice-type attacks, you know, don't do super well into Torkoal. <laughs> so we get Charm off, which is awesome. The scary thing here is that Feeny is just slowly setting up on us and I'm not really doing anything in return, but like, with Sun being up, it should be able to take decent damage. I think we just protect Torkoal this turn and Charm onto this thing i don't want to switch torkoal out into runarigas because that we win the game if we can like runarigas is the only way we win the game um token kids and azuril do no damage whatsoever right we did get a lucky crit on tafini so that's good but leftovers means that it is slowly healing back and i have no offensive pressure against it as of right now but the charms against their glass Rear certainly help because we're like mitigating their strongest dynamax option um but yeah it's been a little bit unfortunate that the first couple games we run into we don't have great answers into the uh like we haven't been able to just you know set up trick room for example or the first game i should say um okay they go for muddy water and we dodge it okay that's nice they just go for another steel spike that's also fine onto a zero it's a lot of damage honestly considering despite the fact that uh, I forget. <laughs> I forgot Azuril is actually a uh, fairy type. For some reason, I thought it was only water. Just like I know Azumarill is. Um... Yeah. Definitely, I was too used to uh, Azumarill's spread specifically, typing spread. Uh. Okay. Well, you're at minus four now. Plus two defense. Don't really care about that. You're gonna go for muddy water again. Maybe there is a world in which we can get. Uh, you know what? I, I just really want to switch Azuro out. Or sorry, t um, Torkoal out into Runarigus. And just Brutal Swing. We're still taking a plus two Muddy Water, though. Wait, why would I Brutal Swing? Oh, to transfer, right? You know what? I I'm, I'm kind of down to try this out. Because then... Mm, no, I, this probably isn't the best idea, because I would think Muddy Water's still a 2 ko onto Runerigus. Yeah, I don't think this was the play. Unless they miss. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I, don't, I, I would assume it's a 2 ko Um, oh, Azuril probably faints here anyway, so this doesn't really work. Unless they quaked into the Torkoal slot, which I think they might have? Okay. 
Well, we got Runariga set up. Um, somehow. Oh man, this just got really interesting. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't feel great, right? Because I had to get a little bit lucky to get here. Um, but we'll take it. Sometimes, like I said, you just kind of have to find creative ways to win. Uh, now the question is how fast the glass trigger is. Like, I... We should be able to just click Rock Slide a bunch now. Uh, we should get Trick Room up still, right? I think... Like, I, I want to protect here. Yeah, I think we, we set up Trick Room. Uh, I'm going to protect. No, but the thing is... Uh, they could switch Glastro out into Glarium Moltres right now, right? If they do that, what do we do? Muddy Water shouldn't KO us with Sunlight being up. Rock Slide should just KO both. Do they switch here? I don't think they do, but I think if they do and I just go for... Ah... Uh... I also soak last year, which is questionable, mainly to cover for the switch. It did switch, okay. But they're going into their last one, which is Togekiss. Okay, that works for me. That definitely works for me. Um, I think soak was questionable here, but it's fine. Muddy water, yeah. Although I can't help but think if I just click rock slide here, maybe we would have won. Um, okay, so zero feints. Now I get the free switch and into Togekiss. But I feel like I have to max Runerigus right now. I can't trick her really, can I? They're just gonna gleam muddy water. I shouldn't have like my opponent has too much spread damage here. I shouldn't have fished for all these switch ins. Alright, I I mean if we get Trick Room up, Runerigus just wins the game with Rock Slide every turn, right? There's not much point in going for follow me, but it could work in case they try to go for single target attacks for whatever reason. I think there's a chance we survive Muddy Water plus Gleam. And if that's the case, Runerigus should just KO everything with Rock Slide under Trick Room. We don't even need a Dynamax to win the game. But it's a question of whether or not we set up Trick Room. Um, I don't know. I also could have considered just clicking Trick Room last turn or just clicking Rock Slide. If we just click Rock Slide last turn, though, we pick up a double KO, but then you get Galarian Moltres and Glastrier back out. And that's still kind of tough to win. So the question is how bulky Runerigus is here and whether or not we can take the attacks from both of these Pokemon. Oh, perfect! They go for Yawn! Okay, that's one of the reasons to go for Follow Me in that position. And they miss again? Oh, wow. Um, that's definitely very lucky. I, I, I think we just needed one miss. We did, definitely didn't need two. Um, I'm just double-checking the Runerigus spread here. It's max HP. No special defense bulk. So I'm curious how much Feeny does to us. Uh, Feeny into Runerigus. Plus two Muddy Water in Sun. Let's say your modest max. It's not enough for a one-hit KO. Um, oh, actually, this has no HP investment. If your modest max special attack, which typically isn't the case, it does 59 to 70%. We got very lucky with the dodges one way or another, that's for sure. But now I think Runerigus just clicks Rock Slide. If we hit them, it should just be GG. Um, they do have two defense boosts, actually, on Feeny, so I think we want to keep that in mind. So Rock Slide plus... Oh, no, we... I, I'd rather Earthquake here, right? Yeah. I'm going to go Helping Hand Earthquake here. The thing is, they could protect the Feeny this turn, but I suspect that they won't because they have the Yawn Pressure onto my Togekiss. Yeah, they don't. Okay, let's see if this KOs. Okay, we get EQ off. Nice. I wonder if Rockside would have just picked up the knockout there, honestly, but I don't think so with the defense boosts. Yeah, they're gonna go for a yawn. Um. Oh. Okay, I I was about to say I'm uh like the sickest play we could make is to go for Max Togekiss to Starfall so that Runerigus doesn't fall asleep, but obviously you can't do that. Okay, so they bring Glastria back. Oh, no, they bring Moltres out. Okay, that's actually interesting, because this means it should be a double protect, right? Uh, I almost wonder if we just switch out Runerigus to reset the drowsiness, because, like, surely you double protect with both, right? 
But, like, maybe it's fine. I'm willing to maybe just Rock Slide and switch Togekiss out into Torkoal. If you don't double protect, like, I just KO both and Torkoal wins. And if you protect, yeah. We, we got very lucky this game to dodge the Muddy Waters, though. Um, but, like, Moltres Fini is probably the best lead you could have <laughs> against what we brought, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Wow. They switch. That is really good for us. I mean, that should win us the game, actually, because my opponent's only path to victory was playing towards Glastrier. So it's like, even though Moltres protects, I don't think they can win now. Uh, they could still win via crits, but now we can just max the, um... Yeah, now we can just max the Torkoal. Alright. I don't know. Bo both, like, both games today have felt a little bit weird, because, like... You know, I didn't just execute the game plan that this team typically aims for, but if anything, I think they're fun games to highlight because it goes to show how you don't necessarily need to rely on a specific setup to win, right? Uh, although this game isn't over, it's actually still very far from over. Yeah, my opponent could actually still very easily pull off uh, a win here. Mainly because they got a really good yawn into Runerigas. I wonder if EQ would have just knocked out Feeny, honestly. Uh, follow me into Fiery Wrath here makes the most sense, right? Is that KO Runerigus? I still have a, I have a Dynamax, right? So, like... Uh, I don't want to max something with Sleeping, so I feel like it's probably just Rock Slide, Max, and Flare here. But I don't, I don't think Maxler one-shots Togekiss. Mm. Also, it's funny, when I was thinking about Dynamax options, I was like, oh yeah, you're gonna, Runer you're gonna max Runerigus, you're gonna max the, um... What else are you gonna max? It's gonna be Runerigus and the, uh... The Drake Azult, but somehow it's Torkoal here. Okay. Okay, they go for Follow Me. I mean, I'm happy with that. I was nervous about Yawn. Maybe they go follow me Nasty Plot, but the thing is that now Max Torkoal shouldn't take that much damage. I mean, if this one-shots, it should be game over. Nice. Alright, good job, Torkoal. Okay, we take our turn to sleep here, and it's either going to be Nasty Plot or just Fiery Wrath. Alright, they just go for Fiery Wrath. Okay, perfect. Nice, and Runerigus even hangs on. Okay, so we get another turn to burn here. Um... Yeah, I, I think we've kind of pinned our opponent here, because Max Flare... I would not. Does it one shot Moltres? I mean, if it one shot Togekiss, I would think you'd one shot Moltres. Like, this is base 150 max flare. And they go for protect, so this is good, right? Because now I guarantee that another flare will KO. All right. Okay, it was definitely knocking out Moltres. Nice. Oh, that, that was a crit. Um, but even without it, yeah, I, I think we certainly would have done enough. Okay, Runerigas takes another turn to sleep. Now, if you're my opponent, I think your best bet is to go for a double protect and hope that I stay asleep for another turn. But they just go for Fiery Wrath, which I don't think is ever the play, because even if you crit Torkoal there, you can't win the game. You have to hope for my max to end, and then uh, I don't get Trick Room, and then flinch me, basically. Uh, or crit me. But, yeah. I, I mean, we, we definitely got lucky uh, in this one, right? Like, I wasn't... I dodged two Muddy Waters, and if I... If both, like, we would survive one, but we certainly wouldn't survive both. And I think even if, you know, if my opponent hit the first one, then they would be probably incentivized to go for, like, Dazzling Gleam with Togekiss rather than something like Yawn. So, I don't know. Bo both of the games we've had, like, yeah, they're wins, but, like, I it doesn't feel amazing. Um, and in this game, this is, like, the perfect example of why it's a smart, like, the team is well composed. You see there's a Drake Azul on the team, right? What better Pokemon to deal with Feeny, Togekiss, and uh, Galarian Moltres than Dracozolt. Dracozolt would have absolutely, you know, smashed against all of those. So, uh, yeah. All right, last one of the day, and I mean, this looks like it could be decent for Runerigus, but <laughs> let's see. Uh, I, I think I'm down for just Togekiss Runerigus. Uh, you know what? Okay, I mean, let's think about it. Can Lilligan Torkoal do anything here? It's not bad, actually. It's very solid. It's mainly the Entail that concerns me. They also have Rillaboom, but, but Azuril's not Water-type. Still so weird to process that. Uh, I don't know. We could go Lilligan, Torkoal, Zolt. 
But I'm just committed to making... Oh, I guess we really did get Runarigas off in the last game, but that was, like, the... Uh, yeah, off us getting pretty lucky uh, from dodging two Muddy Waters. So, like, I haven't been able to just, you know, get a full sweep with this team, which is really what I've been aiming for. <laughs> but I, I guess last game is, like, how, despite the lead being as poor as possible, still could have worked. Although, like, the main takeaway from that last game is, like, I had a pretty good answer into my opponent's team, but I, like, maybe tunnel vision too hard on Runerigas. Like, Zolt plus Togekiss would have maybe just hard won us the game in that last one. Because the thing is, I can just go for Max Lightning and Yawn, right? Like, Max Lightning into Feeny, Yawn onto... Um, the only awkward thing is that you're probably going to switch uh, Moltres out in that position, and then if you come in by going for Max Lightning, I set up the terrain. Like, I actually... Thinking about that last game, if I were my opponent, I'd probably protect Feeny, switch Glastriar in for the Moltres turn one, so I, I could read into that. Or maybe they just sacrifice something to get a free switch into Glastriar. See, boy, Metagross. Alright. Um, fake out Steel Spikes, obviously scary here. See, boy, gets access to Taunt as well as Will O Wisp. Hmm, I don't really know what I want to do turn one. Ideally, we knock out Sableye, honestly. Mm. Fake out's also a problem, right? I mean, you could just... If you fake out Steel Spike, though, I get a free switch in. But then you just Will-O-Wisp me. I don't know if they have Will-O-Wisp, I guess, is the other issue. Okay, I think I'm actually just going to Dazzle Trick Room turn one. We'll see what they go for. It's going to be Max Metagross. Best case is if they go uh, Self Shadow Sneak and then Steel Spike into Togekiss. That would be the dream here. Because then we would survive, and then the next turn I can just follow me. And if we manage to knock out Sableye and get a Zero in for free, that's like the dream outcome. Because then I can just go Brutal Swing EQ everything. Although I guess they have Rillaboom, which gives Runarigas a fair amount of trouble, right? Oh, it is Shadow Sneak. Okay. So if it's Steel Spike into Togekiss, this could be decent. Oh, well, maybe I should've just gone follow me instead. Okay, we get Gleam off. They're not... Okay, yeah, they're Sash Sableye. That makes sense. That's the main thing. Sableye is such a nuisance for us to deal with. Okay, it's gonna be Steel Spike. Into Togekiss! Well, I guess you can speak plays into existence. <laughs> the Focus Sash on this Togekiss is a game changer, honestly. So few people expect it. You know, because it's such a naturally bulky Pokemon. But, uh... It's perfect for a scenario like this. Okay. Um, I guess this next turn is still somewhat awkward. It, it, because you probably have Sash on a uh, Quash on Sableye, right? And so now, if you're my opponent, you can just Shadow Sneak Togekiss, Steel Spike into Rune Regis. But I do have Torkoal. They do have a zero as well. Like, I feel like we should conserve Togekiss in this position. Maybe switch out into a zero. And just protect this turn. And then what? And then I'd probably want to switch Runarigas out into... I mean, they're, they're going to probably quash Steel Spike, right? I, I guess, if anything, I also, like, this turn just buys me a turn to see... I mean, no, I think Sableye's gonna Shadow Sneak, but yeah. Oh, that's a really good play. That was a really good play. Yeah, nice double up. Um... Okay. So I get a free switch in now. Nah, that was, yeah, that was really well done. I had no counterplay to that other than switching in Torkoal at best, I think. But now we can bring in Torkoal. Are we just going to max Torkoal again? It's funny because I really didn't think Torkoal would be such a, like, prime candidate to max every time. If I'm my opponent here, quite frankly, I'm going Quash Quake into Torkoal. So I want to switch Torkoal, honestly, like, back out into Togekiss to bait that and EQ. That knocks out Sableye, gets Chip onto Metagross, and then we have Torkoal under Trick Room. Because you obviously have to be worried about Eruption right now, so I think you have to slow down Torkoal. Maybe they don't have Quash, though. Like, that would be... Okay, yeah. There's Quash. Yep. This is the main thing. We need to we need to get rid of Sableye, right? Sableye, like... 
Uh, the tricky thing about all of the games today is that like, my opponent has always led with some kind of disruption to stop me going on turn one. But we do call that correctly. Okay, good. Okay, I think Torkoal, honestly, is not bad. Can't activate the policy on Runarigus, unfortunately. The double up onto a zero is really smart. Um, okay, they bring out their Togekiss. Their max is over. I have Rock Slide. I have Helping Hand. I also have... E I can just Helping Hand EQ here. There's only two turns of Trick Room left. That makes me a little bit anxious. Um, oh, now what? I can still max too, right? If I max Runarigus, what's my opponent's last one likely going to be? Rillaboom, Entei, Gastrodon. Rillaboom doesn't bode well for us, although I suppose it activated policy. Play I'm leaning towards here is helping hand, max, and rock falling. Because if we eliminate Togekiss, then you're down to your last two Pokemon. You can't protect. Well, you can double protect both, I guess, but... Like, I don't love maxing... Uh, I don't know. Torkoal does obliterate Rillaboom, Metagross, and Togekiss with max flare. I'm not sure about it. Okay. Get the max off. The other problem is that Metagross is a bunch of defense boosts right now, right? They protect. Oh! <laughs> that's the one option I did not cover for. Oh, uh, that's rough. That would have been a reason to helping hand rock slide instead. That's that's brutal. Uh, I don't really know if I can come back from that. That's why Alice, which is a good move on Toga, because no one expects it. Yeah, I can't be upset about that though. My opponent played this quite nicely. Hey, they're gonna iron head into Runarigus. Um This next turn's an obvious double protect from their end, right? Well actually, I don't know if Togekiss has protect here. Alice Switch follow me and protect? That's a lot of support. So I think we hope. Let Togekiss does not protect, but mm, if their last one's Rillaboom, they should win this game, I think. If it's Gastro, things get a little bit more interesting. Smarter them to not activate a potential weakness policy either. Yeah, that was like, yeah. I could have gone follow, uh, just helping hand Rock Slide last turn. That would have been a lot better. Ugh, I really also just don't want to... I'm just going to Quake into Metagross here in Eruption. I don't want to rock fall because I don't want to change the weather right now. I think the sun uh, is too important to have up or, or to give up. But yeah, um, the main thing that was really good by my opponent in this game was the... I, I think what I could have done was actually just given up Togekiss. But if I give up Togekiss, like, Quash is such an issue. Um, yeah, you just kind of run into a tough like set of Pokemon today. That's really interesting that they actually switch Metagross out. That indicates to me they don't have Protect. Oh, and the ally switch again. Okay. I, uh, I don't think Eruption one-shots Togekiss. Okay, never mind. You're so good, Torkoal. <laughs> That's a crit. Uh, I'm assuming Togekiss is bulky enough to survive that. That changes this game dramatically, honestly, because it gives us a special defense boost and we get a knockout onto Togekiss. I mean, that just wins us the game outright. I also didn't think Max Play would actually just knock out Gastron like that. Smart of my opponent to go for Ally Switch twice. Um, yeah, Ally like, surely they don't have Protect on Metagross, right? Otherwise, you'd always Protect in that position. That switch was really bizarre to me, but that would make the most sense. Yeah, I mean, now the game's actually just over. So, today was interesting because we managed to find the most, like, obscure ways to win despite like we just never got oh that's interesting stomping is actually not even a two a ko onto the um onto the torkoal yeah max quake off I i'm just sad because like the I, I didn't get any simple like hey togekiss follow me trick room bring in a zero brutal swing sweep 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 um but it's not always going to be that easy right <laughs> unfortunately that's just how things play out so my question is how much torkoal does into togekiss with eruption i think without the crit probably does like 70 80 percent um, okay, assume they're max HP, charcoal. Yeah, it does 66 to 78. Uh, and I think Gastron was very good against us in this endgame. Like, I don't think it was a loss 100% for us, but it definitely, like, bailed us out a little bit. So, we'll take it. But either way, that was definitely a fun set of games here. Uh, 
Didn't play how I really wanted it to, uh, mainly because we didn't get to just sweep with Azurul and Runerigas, but in the end, you know, we ran up against some pretty solid teams, and uh, we brought Azurul and Runerigas into every game, so, you know, and we managed to win them, so that that's a win, but none of the games today felt amazing, like, just because I, I don't know, like, uh, we, we got a fair amount of good luck in all of them, right? Like, avoided confusions, uh, managed to dodge muddy waters, and then got a crit in this one, it was like, you couldn't, can't really ask for any better, better RNG, and quite frankly, like, these are games where if, like, we don't have luck going our way, I don't know if we can win. Uh, the, the first one's very uh, up in the air. The second one, like, one muddy water dodge, start, like, can keep us in it. Uh, but if they hit both, we, we probably just lose. Uh, and, and then the, the mistake, in, well, not the mistake, I, I guess, it, like, the reflection in game two is that I could have brought in Drake's old out instead. And then in this one, this one was just... Uh, yeah, the the Shadow Sneak and Steel Spike play into the Azure was super smart. Um, because the plan was, yeah, if they didn't go for that, then I could have knocked out the Sable. I baited a Steel Spike into Runarigas and then stall out the Max. Uh, honestly, if they didn't have uh, Ally Switch on Togekiss, I actually felt really confident about this endgame as well. But the Ally Switch was like a really big game changer, and they got maximum value out of it the first turn. And in the second turn, they really should have as well, but we were lucky enough to get that crit. And I'm assuming they're bulky enough to survive. Um, like, actually, even if you have no bulk on Togekiss, I think it's still not a, ever a one-hit KO. It only does 79 to 93%, so, yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely lucky. Lucky set of games today. But, you know, that's, that's, how, that's how it works sometimes. Sometimes you get really lucky, sometimes you get really unlucky. Uh, and you have to make the most out of your luck when you get it. Uh, but you also have to, you know, try to not tilt when you, when you get unlucky. So, today we're on the, uh, definitely the better end of it. But, you know, it's not going to last. And, uh, I'm hoping tomorrow we get, uh, you know, to fully feature a zero on Runerigas. But, either way, this is a really fun team. Uh, and it's cool to just use Pokemon that you basically never see, ever. So, yeah. That's going to be it for this one. Thanks so much, as always, for watching. Thank you to John for the team. Check them out. Link in the description below. Leave a like if you enjoy. And I'll catch you all next time. All right. Peace.